After the flood, Noach and his family were still stuck in the ark waiting for the waters to recede. Eventually, Noach opened a window and he sent a raven out. The raven kept circling the ark and returning. He sent a dove out and the dove also couldn't find any dry land, so it came back into the ark. A week later, he sent it out again and this time the dove came back with an olive leaf in its bill showing Noach that the waters had subsided. Why did Noah have to replace the raven with the dove? I get it, starting pitchers, don't throw nine innings, you need relief pitchers and closers, but back then they did. Why couldn't the raven complete the job? One commentator explains that the raven refused to do the job. It was supposed to fly around looking for dry land, but it wouldn't. It kept circling the ark and wouldn't leave its immediate vicinity. Why? The Talmud gives us an explanation. If you've never heard it before, you'll think I'm crazy, but I'm not, you can look it up. It states that the raven thought that Noah had designs on its mate. It thought that Noah was sending it out so that he could pursue a relationship of some sort with Mrs. or Rebbitz and Raven, which obviously is completely ridiculous. What's going on? Perhaps what's going on is that the raven was comfortable in the ark. It didn't want to leave its comfort zone where it had all its needs taken care of and go out into this brave new world, but it had to come up with an excuse it couldn't admit that it was scared. Ravens aren't supposed to be wimps, especially if they're from Baltimore. So it had to come up with some excuse, even a crazy one. Oh, uh, I can't go because uh, you, Noah, I, I think you might pursue my mate. Really? The joke's on us because we do the exact same thing. We are so addicted to our creature comforts. We can't get up off that couch and we will make any excuse not to leave our comfort zones, even a bird-brained one like the ravens. And now, more than ever in our lives, we've got to stop doing that. We have to leave our comfort zones and take things on, things we haven't done before, whatever they may be. Shabbat, tefillin, prayer, study, charity, volunteering, getting along with each other, even if we're different. Every single one of us has a brother and a sister who was killed, who was taken captive in Gaza, who's about to go to war because we're all brothers and sisters as part of the Jewish people. And so we've got to leave our comfort zones. If we're not doing anything, we've got to do. And if we are doing, we've got to do more. They need us. Mm -hmm.